also talk about uh, another matter that popped up yesterday uh, unexpectedly. And this is an account uh, from CTFM that I will be sharing with you. Uh, so police officers on Tuesday arrested Caleb Kuda, a broadcast journalist with City FM and City TV. According to the police, he was arrested for filming at the premises of the National Security Ministry, a restricted security zone. About seven heavily armed officers subsequently stormed the premises of City FM in an attempt to arrest Zoe Abubedu, another broadcast journalist with a respected media house, whom they claimed had received files from Caleb Kuda in an attempt to arrest Zoe after tagging her as Caleb Kuda's accomplice, the heavily armed officers besieged the premises of City FM in three different vehicles. While at the premises, the officers tried to overpower Zoe, who at the time was standing at the company's car park. Zoe subsequently bolted and reported the issue to her superiors after sensing danger because some of the officers tried to capture her. The incident shocked the staff who came out in their numbers to catch a glimpse of it. Uh, management of City FM headed uh, by the chief executive who was present at the time of the incident intervened and together with Zoe and other managers followed the officers to the National Security Ministries. They returned with Zoe while Caleb Kuda was interrogated for a while longer before his release later. So this is an account as given by City FM of what happened in their premises yesterday when one of their journalists went uh, to the offices of or one of the national security offices and allegedly took a photograph uh, at a designated security zone and what happened afterwards. I'm sure you two gentlemen heard about this. Uh, and this is also very surprising because there's an incident with some national security operatives uh, who they carry themselves as national security op operatives, but it turned out they were not, and they are in courts uh, battling the issues out. And then this happens just yesterday. I was saying this morning, especially when we claim, I mean, we say it with all the pride uh, in us that this is a country uh, where we practice rule of law. So you are lawmakers. What is the rule of law in what happened yesterday? <laughs> well, um, very untidy. I mean, I just have to be blunt about it. I mean, if you know Zoe, and she's not my friend, but I've seen her, you don't even need two police personnel to, 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 to arrest her or to invite her. I mean, the whole process of getting seven or eight fully armed policemen to come to the station, to very, very untidy. I mean, um, uh, yesterday I listened to the general manager, Ben Adavli, on Metro TV. Uh, he says that when they went to the national security premises, mm -hmm. the director, Mr. I've forgotten the name, Muzi also, apologized to them that he did not intend to have this kind of drama uh, at, the, at the site. But um, my dear, you, sometimes uh, journalists also have to be circumspect in the way they do their work. I mean, nobody can prevent you from doing your work. But when you go to a national security outfit and there are signs, uh, signages all over the place that you cannot take photographs, you cannot film. I mean, you don't take, um, as it were, the law into your own hands and to be filming at a national security area. We, I go to the national security office sometimes. When you get there, even your phones are, are taken from you, you know. So um, I'm sure with hindsight, the journalists probably would have acted differently. But of course, the processes leading to the arrest of um, uh, Zoe and all that, I think that was very, very untidy. Hmm. Okay. So is that what should happen to a journalist if they did the wrong thing? Granted, you know, that you did the wrong thing. Well, according to uh, what we call it, uh, the general manager, uh, Caleb was arrested at the premises because he was there. He was arrested at the premises and then upon interrogation, they realized that he had forwarded the video to another colleague, in this case, Zoe, uh, who was then at uh, City FM's premises. I'm told Caleb was handcuffed at the time he was brought. Do you brought. find anything wrong with a person being arrested on the spot, his phone searched, and the realization that he had forwarded 
uh, pictures or some messages to a colleague. Is there something wrong with that whole? And again, I'm coming back to the rule of law and your lawmakers because there are processes. We've even said that if a police person is arresting you, they have to read to you your right. They have to, and if they, you have to search my phone, you need a warrant. You know, you need you need permission from the court to do certain things. So I'm just, you know. Well, I'm trying not, to figure out if yeah. we all either find something wrong or I, if there was no, something I, fundamentally no, I, wrong. I, 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 I've, I've made it very clear unfolded. that the whole process, I've made it clear here. Because it sounds to that me. That the process was a little bit untidy. I, I've said so, that the process was, was a little bit untidy. But as I said, I mean, you can't go to the Burma camp and begin to film, even the American embassy. Ordinarily, you don't see journalists just going and taking pictures just because the assignage is there telling you that, hey, this place is a security area. You cannot do your normal uh, thing. Of course, as I said, the process is leading to the arrest, handcuff, and moving seven vehicles to the premises of CTFM. Really, really is untidy. And I think they could have done it in another way. I mean, they could have just called um, any of the management of um, CT because I'm told when Caleb was arrested, one of the policemen called uh, one of the gentlemen from city. So they were aware that he had been arrested and been interrogated, you know. So they could have done that in a very nice and tidy way. But of course, we also must be very clear that you cannot, as it were, go to a national security area and begin to film and take pictures uh, just like that. Okay. That I have to make it clear. Uh, before I bring uh, Mr. George in, I want us to listen to the general manager of City FM, Bernard Avle, as he spoke on Good Evening Ghana on Metro TV yesterday. I was having lunch, funny enough, with some ends. And we had, so we, we were sitting in the refectory mm -hmm. eating. And then we. About what time was this? 3 15, 3 20. Mm -hmm. And then we, we sensed, so Zoe had gone out to pick a call. Mm -hmm. And we, we sensed some pandemonium outside. And then we saw Zoe running back in. And then we. Running? Yes, she was, she was, I will show you the video if, if you should. Yeah. She, she wasn't walking, she was, she was in a state of panic. She says, they, they want to arrest me and I'm saying I have to speak to my boss first. So we, <laughs> I got up and I noticed that there was about six policemen or seven with guns. Where? So CTFM and CCTV is two adjacent buildings. Mm -hmm. So the, the alley between the, mm -hmm. the two places. That's where the police were. Yes, and they, the were, they had come into the building from the car park, walked probably about 100 meters. To the TV side? Yes, almost behind the station where we eat. We have a refectory there. Mm -hmm. And they, had, they were led by a plain clothes person. Mm -hmm. So when Zoe came to where I was with some men, and then I stood up and asked the gentleman in plain clothes what the matter was. Because some of the staff and other people had come to sort of what is going on here? Why are you chasing the lady? Mm -hmm. So it was it was it was quite a disconcerting scene. Television. Head of television. Yes. Okay. So he told you that Caleb had been arrested. He says yes, Caleb has been detained mm -hmm. at national security. For what? And he's trying to get all the details. Okay. 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 So then this incident happens mm -hmm. and then the pieces are falling together. Okay. Okay. So we we asked what their mission was after we, we calmed them down and they say they have come for Zoe because her phone has possession of some video that Caleb took. Now, I didn't even know where Caleb was because I hadn't sent him on any assignment, so it was a bit confusing. We said, well, we would have to come with her ourselves mm -hmm. because they had guns and there was, it was a bit scary mm -hmm. because they, they drove in in a very rash way, parked the cars in a very interesting way, jumped out of the car, walked in. Funny enough, when they came, Zoe was on the phone. I don't know how they knew her. Later on, we found out that Caleb was one of the pickups. But well, Caleb was in there. So what happened was they had brought him to city to identify and he was in handcuffs. Oh, I yes. see. So this was, and I'm, so we, we are now seeing, oh, so Caleb is in their vehicle as well because initially he was in the vehicle. But you couldn't talk to him? We did talk to him. But so we said, look, if you want Zoe, then you have to take all of us with, with her. So Samens drives his car with me, Richard Mensa, and Anna Seydou, our security correspondent, with Zoe in the car. In Samens' car? Yes, and we okay. say, you go, we'll come. So you drove behind them or? Well, they left. We know where they were, so we went ourselves. Okay, so they left and they were expecting you to come. In fact, when they got to one of the junctions, they waited so okay. that we sort of followed them mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we go in there and first we met Azugu. Was well, the famous one? Yes. So okay. then he says he had authorized them to come mm -hmm. to bring Zoe. Mm -hmm. And then he complained about what Caleb was doing on their premises. What did he say, Caleb? Was doing? He says he was filming some cars at the car park of the National Security Establishment. So there are two buildings mm -hmm. the ministry and then another building which is not labeled. Mm -hmm. This is Blue Gate area. Yeah. So there were some cars in a shed. 
that he was filming and running commentary on his phone. I think he was recording it and saying something. Oh, things. he was saying some things. Yes. But what was Caleb doing at National Security? Your statement said he went to visit somebody. So w w we later found out that he had gone there to do... I, we didn't send him there, to be honest. It wasn't an assignment. Okay. So I think he had gone to film some vehicles which had been abandoned. So That's the purpose for which he went there? Yes. Okay. Which we found out after we spoke to him when we okay. got there. Okay. So the, 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 the vehicles had been uh, were under some shed. Mm -hmm. So this is at the other side of the car park. And he was filming the vehicles and sort of talking about cars having been left there mm -hmm. or something. So they said they found out that he had unlawfully filmed those things and sent the video to Zoe. On his, so, okay, so they took Caleb's phone. Yes. And then they found out that the videos had been sent to Zoe. Yes. Okay. So this is how come they came with him to come and pick up Zoe in that Rambo style. Mm. So we, we, we spoke to, and we also but said... how was Caleb filming? Was he filming secretly? Was he standing somewhere? Was he acting? From our understanding, it wasn't secret because he was... I think they all knew what he was doing. Or I, I don't know. But from what they said, they said they saw him doing it. Mm -hmm. So and if you look at how open the place is... I don't know. So they saw him doing it, then they arrested him. Because you see, I haven't seen the video of Caleb in the act. Okay. What, okay. I, what I have seen is what he filmed, which essentially oh, okay, are okay, cars okay. in a shed. So okay, I okay. don't know the manner in which he did it, but yeah, from, okay, okay. from I, what I we were point. told, they, he was in an open place so they could see him. Mm -hmm. But that place is supposed to be, according to them, mm -hmm as a restricted security zone. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't hiding his camera, I, don't, I do not think he was. I think he was holding the phone, because I haven't seen the film, but I've seen what he filmed, so okay. it was very brief. All right, so they arrested him. Yes. Uh, most likely then took him inside yes. and asked him, what are you filming for, something like yes. that. Then they found out that he had sent it to Zoe. Yes. So then let's go and pick Zoe. Which is sh shocking, because if Caleb identifies us as a journalist from CTFM, and you want Zoe, to talk to her, you can call anybody. How did CTFM first know Caleb was in the possession of national security? Who, who told Richard who? Mensah told me. Who told him? He had been called by Azugu. All right, so that's uh, the accounts uh, by Bernard Avle, general manager of uh, CTFM. Uh, he spoke to Paul Admortry. Okay, let me come to you, Sam George. I'll raise four issues. Four issues. First one. The backstory to why Caleb Kuda was there or was not there in itself is a matter for a different discussion. But the first issue I'll raise is that so long as Caleb was in a security zone so designated and taking footage when it is prohibited in that zone in itself, what's poor judgment on his, side, on his part? First point I'll make, poor judgment on his part. Yes, a journalist is driven by wanting to get the story and get the scoop. There are several ways to get your story, get your scoop. He should have found a different way. So that's the first point. Second point, this whole concept of you cannot record in a security zone must be looked at again. Because, you see, we, we tout ourselves as being in a democracy, 29 years of practicing a democracy. All of this are relics of how President Rawlings survived 19 years as a military or 11 years as a military ruler. And it, these are vestiges of a military dictatorship where they say you can't record. People go to the Pentagon and stand in front of the building and stand in the courtyard of the Pentagon, which is the heart of U.S. intelligence, and take videos. There are sections of the premises that are designated out of reach. People go to the White House, stand in front of the White House, take pictures and videos. It is not a crime. There are portions of the White House where you can't even gain access to because those are designated security zones. Why me, as a citizen of Ghana, can go to the US and go and stand in front of the White House and take a picture or a video and it's not seen as a crime? But if I dare go and stand in front of the Jubilee House, at Christ the King and take a video or be arrested makes no sense to me. And we must begin to question these things. People say you can't enter Burma camp and take a video. Why? Why? Why then does the military do the open day and invite people into the military barracks and allow people to take videos and pictures? You see, we must begin to move. If we say we have moved from military rule to civilian democracy, 
we must begin, we must shed off all of these vestiges. I, I agree. If the guy was taking a video at a car park of national security. Inside. Yes, inside the car park, yeah. at a car park. What is so, what is so, who, who shows, what risk to national security does that pose? That's a question we should ask ourselves. If he entered into a building, the building itself, and maybe some installations within the building, in that, in that premises. Person, he was inside it, the building. He was no. He was he recording was at the car park. No, he was. He was inside the premises. Inside. No, not he, he. was. He was not recording inside national security buildings. He was on the premises, and you know that place. You see, if for example he had entered into the the National Emergency Operations Center, the building adjacent to the new Ministry of National Security building, and was taking recordings in there, I would be jittery because that is an emergency operations center, that is at the heart of national security operations. So taking a picture or video of that place for me would be a huge security breach. But the car park, what is it the number plates or is it the cars there? That for me is the second issue. The third issue I will raise. I have seen Caleb Kuda. I know Caleb Kuda. I know Zoe Abubedu. Strangely, both of them, their waist is like my thigh. One thigh. They are finger finger people. If you've arrested Caleb or detained him at national security, and you are bringing him to his station to identify the individual who he sent a message to. First and foremost, why have you handcuffed him? It's simply because Caleb Kudana, he, they wanted him. Over this fixed Ghana, uh, fix Ghana demo, he had blasted police well, well, so he was a wanted man. So to humiliate him. How, how do you know he was a, he was oh, a wanted man? But you didn't see the video of the police. I, man. I saw the there video. Was a video of a policeman who wanted to take his phone on that day. So already he now they were looking for him. And then, so do you handcuff him, put a fear of man in him, and come and embarrass him and parade him like a, like a, a criminal? Because what? He took a video. Now, if you wanted Zoe to come, couldn't you have just picked the phone call to, and made a call to the management and said, we are, we are calling from national security. Please, we need you to bring Zoe to help us with an ongoing investigation. Then let CTFM say, we will not bring her. Then you go to court, rule of law. You go to court and get a warrant for, to secure her arrest. And then the fourth issue I would raise has to do with the modus, the operations of so-called national security operatives. I have watched the CCTV footage in full. You need to see the gun etiquette of the officers. And anybody who's got weapons training will understand what I'm talking about. The gun etiquette of the, the seven to eight officers who were there was poor, extremely poor. Any of those weapons could have, could have discharged themselves at any time. You see, there's a way when you are in a crowded civilian space, you, 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 you hold or handle a weapon. But this whole attempt, you are going to pick Zoe Abubedu, and then you are, you, are, you are holding a gun. Then, God forbid, NDC comes to power, and we decide we want to go and pick Henry Cote. Better we will take, we'll take our tank. Because if we are going to use, if for Zoe, Zoe Abubedu, you are using seven, seven armed policemen. <laughs> then the day you are going to pick Henry Cote. That one, you will take a more tank and a party helicopter. You get it? It makes no sense. But you see, the last thing I'll say, and this one, kill him. What now here? What now here? Me Azugu can fail me. Oh, mommy. When Azugu used it, did it to me, is Azugu still supposed to be at national security? What did the presidential commission report say about Azugu? Why is Azugu still in position in this country? and ordering such, such activities. You see, when first they came for the Jews, you didn't speak because you were not a Jew. Then they came for the Muslims. You didn't speak. They came for the Catholics. You didn't speak. Today they come for you. Who speak for you? In when this, it was Sam George. In this matter. Oh, Sam George. You are, the one, who likes, you are the one who likes it. Azugu has Azugu do you again. Okay. So in this matter, when it was Sam George, we all spoke up. We, we did speak when it was Sam George. But can I ask you two gentlemen, because you are in Parliament, what kind of regulation does national security operate with? Um, there's, a, there's a new... We, we have the Security and Intelligence Agencies Act. It's a new one that was... Um, I think we completed it just before the elections, uh, sometime in November 2020, where we, we redesignated the agencies. That's when BNI was redesignated as NIB. Um, the, the BNC was designated as Signals Bureau and a few other agencies. So there is the Securities and Intelligence, Intelligence Agencies Act. I can't remember the number, but it's, it's a 2020 law that reviewed the original 1996 legislation 
and and has given the the, the, the scope of work of every agency. So all of these agencies now sit under the National Security Council. So there's a council where, and then there's the minister and the coordinator sit atop that council. But then there are several agencies under the council where you have the NIB, you have the Signals Bureau, you've got uh, research, I mean, a number of them. So I, I'm just trying to figure out if there are operations in terms of when they are arresting a citizen is different from what the police would do. Uh, maybe I, I, I will not sit here and uh, claim to know a lot about yeah, what but, happens. But you should know a lot more than yes, us. But, and if see, there is because my, 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 my only worry is that uh, there has been too many reports of this, such incidents going on, and that's my only worry. I think the ministry itself has to uh, maybe sit down when. Try and is it the ministry? I mean, is it in their interests or my, my brother parliaments? Just, my brother just explained the structure, and of course, it's all everything goes. Is I mean, with the ministry, you know, we've just, just heard of uh, people fake uh, national security operatives being arrested on Galamsey sites. Just this morning, I was hearing a group of people in Kumasi have stormed. Uh, they wanted to go and. Uh, take away the coordinator, security coordinator in Kumase. I think these things, there are too many reports about. Um, if you know the minister himself and enjoy knows him, I mean, it's, he's very calm, you know. But it doesn't uh, but reflect in the operations. Yes, so we um, don't appreciate that calmness. And that, that, that's what I'm saying, that the, they, ha they have to have a, a deeper look into so, so, some of these things going on. So who on. must do that? I'm sorry if I am not so optimistic, because, because I saw a commission of inquiry and I saw them do their work, expose, you know, all the things that are so wrong with their operations. And I see that we're still in that same system. Nothing has changed. So I'm wondering who will bring the change. You, you know, if I can jump in here, one thing that came out from the Presidential Commission on IRS West Wogon is the fact that the National Security Council is not allowed or man mandated by law to have a standing army or a standing force, armed force. Do you understand me? And so anytime national security wants to carry out an operation, they rely on, the they rely on one of their agencies. B, and, and that's why in the, in the new legislation we did, the BNI at first, not all of, not the, the BNI and the BNC, which is now Signals Bureau, did not use to carry weapons. We, we have given them the power to carry weapons because when the BNI is going to effect a certain arrest, when they go plain hands, at times some of the kinds of arrests they do, they need weapons. But previously, and even as it sits now, what you would expect is that they would rely on the Ghana Police Service or any of the armed forces who are all under the council to effect this arrest. However, let's ask ourselves, and that's the fundamental question, must the arrest of a citizen or someone suspected to be an accomplice to, a, to an offense or a crime being committed in the case of Zoe Abu Bedou in this time, what I'm still trying to wrap my head around is whether you can just effect that arrest, especially when it is not such a, a, a major crime, it's a misdemeanor more or less, without a court warrant, without an arrest warrant. You ask the question, you arrest me, and then you start going through my phone. You are breaching my privacy. Because I remember very well, and, and the reason I'm raising the phone issue is when we passed the cybersecurity law, also, around the same time with the security and agencies thing in November, October 2020, one of the key things national security wanted when we were passing that, drafting the legislation, was the ability for them to do interception for 48 hours before going to court. And we said, no, we won't allow it. It's the reason why the MPP kicked against the interception of postal packet bills the NDC tried to do in 2015. We said, whatever the case is, go to a judge. And we said there are judges on call. We use the American system, FISA, where you can go to a judge in church. You can go to a judge at 3 a.m., wake him up. So long as it poses a security risk, the judge will grant you the warrant because you need to protect the rights of the citizens in the execution of security operations. So yeah. my point is, you've, you've arrested me. I'm doing something wrong. So confiscate my phone. But to go into my phone, secure the requisite warrants and make sure that, because today, if we want to enforce the, the, the data protection rights of Caleb Kuda, is, there, is national security going to be able to show us the chain of custody of his phone to ensure that nobody took out information from his phone that was not related to what they were investigating? 
Do, do you understand me? So, so these I, are all issues that we, we, we take for granted in this part of the world. But if we want to say we are embracing best practices, officers, and you see, he, st he talks about Wafa Kandapa. Me, again, someone I call Wafa. He's, like he's an uncle to me. He's like a father to me. And so, and he himself attested to it when he came for his vetting and he was asked about me. But you see, the point here is, it is one thing the minister having a certain persona. It's another thing, the operatives who work in the outfit and the kind of mindset and operations they have. In this town, everybody who carries a gota phone, those big phones, yeah. where they get them, national security. National security operatives, you must, rather, you must be a ghost. People must not know you or see you. But in this town, even when a person is walking in town, he's carrying a gota and holding a gun and walking like a Robocop, hey! What kind of, what so kind of I, I, thinking I, do we have? I, I have a concern as we try to wrap up the conversation. You know, when the early first week January storming in Parliament, we witnessed it, but we didn't see you become so angry as parliamentarians that you took a certain action. And so when this is happening to us as citizens, because you didn't stand up for yourselves, I wonder if you would do anything for us and if anything would change going forward. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure we didn't stand up for ourselves. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, George, George, George has been very, very, very vociferous on that issue. And of course, I mean, on several occasions in Parliament, I mean, doing the vetting and all that, questions have been put to the relevant But ministers. again, how do the questions resolve the issues? Uh, George, you, you have to uh, uh, remind me of this. I think before we, we rose, I think there was a... Um, what do you call a motion it? Emotion for, for, for a, a yes. parliamentary, parliamentary inquiry, inquiry into, the act, uh, into the that. Act. So yes, Parliament has taken a very serious stand on what happened on the on the on the night of seventh uh, of the morning of seventh of January. Parliament took a very very serious stand about that. I mean, I was in Parliament that day, and when I saw them, I told the colleague that nah, soldiers on the floor, it, it's 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 quite it's, it's not tidy. So yes, um, it's not entirely the case. The Parliament has not been firm on some of these issues we have. And it has been demonstrated during vettings and motions being filed in Parliament, uh, seeking a parliamentary inquiry into the whole issue. So yes, Parliament has been very, very serious about it. Hmm. I you don't know, know if, you, if you answered my question, but maybe, yeah, maybe Mr. We, 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 have, we have been serious <laughs> about it. You should you rest see, The problem of security in this country, and again, I'm going to be brutally frank, is us politicians. And I'm scared where the future of this country is going. Because we've got some of the finest security operatives in this country. But politicians over the years, and this is not an MPP problem. It is not an NDC problem. It is across the aisle. All parties. We've done this. It may be worse in one than the other, but we are all guilty of it. And there's no small sin or big sin. The politicization of our security apparatus is what the problem is. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Ken Opunamani? That's the head of presidential security. The colonel who led, Joseph Punamani, who led the, the soldiers onto the floor of parliament. You think that he, on his own, would have just walked into parliament? You think he, on his own, would have just entered the floor of parliament with armed soldiers? He's a trained soldier. He's a colonel of the Ghana Armed Forces. He won't do it. It is simply because some politician somewhere gave him an order. And that is why... Even though we want to do a, an investigation into it, we may not really go far with it. We would do the shadow boxing, but the real substance of the issue is that that officer did not command his men in there on his own accord. If he did, it would be, a, it would be akin to treason. Because getting into the floor of parliament with armed soldiers is akin to overthrowing parliament. You understand me? But he did it on the orders of somebody. Look, these officers again who went there. They did that, we are here being told, on the orders of Azugu. Azugu, yes. Did Azugu check it up with the chain of command? If he didn't, is anybody going to reprimand him? Anybody, and in this case, based political on your, authority. Based on your previous experience, please, draw it your will, uh, Please, yeah, it won't happen. <laughs> it won't happen. It won't happen. And you see, that's the point. And you see, when, when you embolden people, when Azugu misbehaved, as the officer on the ground in Ayaso West Wagon, because it was Sam George, and his MPP in power. Oh, forget about it. Tomorrow, when the NDC comes to power, then you would also, you have a certain expectation of the NDC base that, ah, 
but they did it to you. So also go and do it to Collins. No, no, don't come, don't come. To ah. <laughs> you get it. And then, and so you realize that we are getting into an arena where it is becoming normalized for us as politicians to use the might of national security to threaten and, and, and we are supposed to be protecting the citizenry. But now, what we rather want to do is put the fear of man. Now you, Mamavi, as a journalist, after you've seen what they did to Zoe, and you, you got more body than Zoe. <laughs> so when they are coming for you to be 12, the next time you are going to talk or say anything, there is something at the back of your mind that is ringing in your head. This is not acceptable in a democracy. So how do we end this? Politicians, we need to call a spade a spade. We need to come to that place and say, look, enough of this. If, I, if I'm not happy with Collins and I'm in government, I should use the mind of states to show him where power lies. I should use the rule of law. If today he is in government and he thinks that I've done something wrong, he should not say that ah because his 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 obi ewa abayimo he will pick a phone and then they will call and then they dispatch three soldiers to come and slap slap me. No. Well, until I... politicians learn, and you see, sadly, this is what ACP Agojo spoke about, and he's being punished. I rest my case. You know, I, I don't know if we need a consultative forum, but once it is politicians at the center of this, <laughs> I wonder who will call the forum. Uh, but this is where we are. Some people are not so optimistic that, you know, this trend will change. But thank you, gentlemen. I think it's been a very fruitful conversation, lots of education. Uh, so thank you so much. You guys are going back to Parliament? When? 25th. 25th. Okay. 25th is supposed to be a holiday. Eh? AU day. <laughs> So maybe yes. we we'll move to 20. Originally it was, was hey, no, no. Come on. It, I think uh, we're on the 18th, 18th then it and then it was the day, is it now a holiday or a commemorative? You day? should tell me you're in part of it. <laughs> <laughs> These people they confuse us with the They read me right. I don't know which one is a holiday or which one is a commemorative day. Hey, I, I do show boy. Well, stay <laughs> with us. I'm say. Oh, I'm happy. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, you want to say something? I didn't say Nana. I said I do show boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay with us. You're still watching the AM show.